So everything that we do here starts with a need, a consumer need of some sort, whether that comes in from military or law enforcement, how can we help them better do their job or a consumer need? What are, what are they seeing in the field that they would like to improve upon or, uh, or solve something that hasn't been solved before? So we take that need and we've got an internal team here of, um, in terms of engineering, anywhere from 80 plus engineers, um, maybe closer to 100 if you count engineering technicians and others. And this team is 100% focused on meeting those needs and solving um, what we would call problems or gaps out of there in the market. So we would start with uh, an idea statement. What are, we, what are we trying to accomplish? So one example that we've used in the past was um, when you look at a variable powered, like a low, um, a low magnification variable powered optic, so a one to six, for example, um, there's a need to switch between one and six. A lot of times people need it on one of those powers or the other. So you need it all the way down on one or all the way up on six. Um, you know, several years ago, we launched a product called the Devo, and that was uh, something that could be partnered with a red dot. Uh, and then you had one power with your red dot, and it was six power at the exact same time. That's uh, just an example, but it's the, the kind of the problem statement or the need was, I need to get from one power to six as quickly as possible. So um, in looking at that, what we would do, uh, we would start our internal process. This would go to our R&D team. So the research and development team starts out with um, what are we trying to solve for? And then we'll come at it from as many different directions as possible. Is there a way to speed up the motion on the power selector? Is there a way to make a split view scope where the top is this and the bottom is that, one and six? But the biggest thing is we don't want to look at that from just one angle. How do we solve it the way that we've done it in the past? This team is really, really focused on coming at this from every different direction and trying to solve it um, sometimes inside the box and a lot of times outside of the box. And so that, uh, that's really where our process would start. So we'll, we'll start out with um, an idea or a problem statement. We'll, we'll take the R&D team. Um, this is a group of very creative, very thoughtful engineers. So they are typically degreed engineers. And we will bring them to as near of a field environment as possible. Um, with something like needing to switch from one to six power, that's easy to replicate. You can take them on a coyote hunt. You can go to a shooting range and have targets that are really close. Um, so you run through a shoot house or a, a three gun event. Some of the other things that um, our military faces are a little tougher to replicate. Um, and so in, in some of those cases, we'll bring in outside experts to help brief the team. Um, the main thing is the team has to fully understand that issue and what we're trying to solve for. Now we let them really go to work. What tools do they have available to, to go solve this problem? And so they'll look at um, what are the environmental issues that we're dealing with, what are the um, rapid prototyping capabilities we have to go out and check some of these things. And so then they'll take that and they'll formulate a plan. Typically, we actually have multiple people do this and we have them start in um, kind of in a vacuum. So if you've got five people working on this team, you may have all five of them come out and say, let's, you go off on your own and develop, let's say, 10 different ways that you can solve this. And we have each person do that, right? Um, and that way they're not really getting caught up in groupthink or, or anything else. And they go through and they come up with kind of 10 unique ideas each. Then that team will come together as a group and start expanding upon that. And that's really where the brainstorming starts. Um, sometimes this brainstorming takes a day, sometimes it takes a year, sometimes it takes 10 years. Uh, we have some ideas that we, we have seen an issue out there and the technology is not ready to, to solve it. Um, so it is a constant churn for this group and we, we go through kind of problem statement or gap in the market and, and we just keep looking at those day after day after day um, until something that looks a little more viable comes up. Um, once you have something that looks a little more solid, um, so you decide, okay, what if we did a prism-based um, fixed power optic? So in the one to six um, uh, example that we had used, if you take a one power red dot and then build a six power prism type of a site, can it look around the side? Can it um, sit underneath? What are some things that we can do here? And we'll go rapid prototype that. So in our, um, in our R&D or research and development area, we've got 
3D printers. We've got um, machines to, to make things like main tubes, um, adjustment dials, etc. So pretty much anything that we can in, envision as a, as a scope or as an optic, we can build right here on site in our model shop. So we've got machining capabilities, we've got 3D printing capabilities, and what that really allows the, uh, the R&D team to do is take an idea or what we would call a napkin drawing or, or a whiteboard drawing that um, came from a, a brainstorming session, and we can start to basically build those out of either plastic or metal, et cetera. So we have kind of a saying where you go from paper to wood to metal, meaning that essentially you start with an idea that's drawn out somewhere. Um, then you make it out of something that's a little less uh, restrictive, um, easier to work with, like wood. And then once you get that design refined a little bit farther, you would go to metal. We just happen to use plastic instead of wood. So we um, have 3D printers, um, we have lens capability right here on site. And so what we'll do is take all of those um, ideas and the more viable ones, we'll start making in that same day an actual functional model. So we can look at it, um, see how it performs. In some cases, they're actually shootable samples. So that's, uh, that's helpful. And that really lets us uh, reflect on which portions of the idea seem viable and which portions of the idea may not be. How does it really interact with uh, the rest of the environment, the firearm, the shooter, um, eye placement, all of those things. So we rely on a variety of end users. Um, some are professional end users, so we're talking military, law enforcement, um, et cetera. And some are, are more of the, what I would call commercial type shooters. And when I say that, that's actually in, in a lot of cases where many of the really good ideas come from. So if you look at PRS shooters, um, competitive shooters, we would call that kind of the consumer marketplace. But these are folks that are using these products um, kind of professionally as well, because they're professional shooters, but they're using them uh, for very, very um, specific purposes, I would say. So if you look at a PRS match, that's gonna be timed and long distance. If you look at three gun shooters, that's gonna be speed and potentially transitioning quickly from one firearm to the next, one optic to the next, um, and it may be shorter distances. So we call on a variety of, of what we would call end users that are professional end users and, and consumers to really tell us how, how can we help make your job or your um, sport more fulfilling? How do we make you better at it? How do we make sure that you're winning more frequently? So, you know, some of these products we can, we can prototype very quickly and they come to market very quickly. Um, others are, you know, very complicated. Um, it, if it was easy to solve, it would have already been solved. Um, and really getting them right and, and making sure that they will last a lifetime takes some time in a lot of cases. And so the Mark V, which I've got one here, uh, is a great example of that. The Mark V was probably four or five years in the making for us. Um, it's primarily a long range precision type of a rifle scope. And we really needed to focus on making sure every aspect of that rifle scope was um, perfect and was suited for long range shooters of today, but more importantly, the long range shooters of tomorrow as well. And so we focus on tracking, we focus on clean magnification, we fo focus on the proper reticle designs. All of those things in a, in a rapidly changing market can be a challenge until you break it down and really look at what are the trends, what are the most important features, and how do we get that wrapped up into one good package that can last a lifetime. Our R&D team has a, kind of a, a ton of resources here, and so it's a really fun place to, to work, and, and some of them call it play, um, because they can really go get everything they need right here on site. The R&D team here has access to virtually everything that they would need, um, from field resources and input from professional end users to having 3D printers and all the machine um, you know, resource requirements that they would need to build anything, right down to having access to an indoor shooting tunnel here at 100 yards with full chronograph capabilities and uh, the ability to measure group size out to a 2,000 meter, so a 2,000 meter outdoor range that we have just slightly off site here. So really what they can do is go from idea to concept to testing it in the field virtually in the same day if they needed to. So once we've gone through and, and kind of prototyped uh, a new design and we want to look at it further, so we've, we've 
modeled it, we've tested it, and probably gone and shot it a little bit. Now it's time to get it over to our design group and really get after that design, and really, really solidify things. When it comes to product innovation, everything we do comes from an insight. How can we help make you more effective in the field? How can we help solve for a problem you may have identified? How can we help solve for a problem that honestly maybe hasn't even been identified yet? Making your products better every single day starts with a formalized insights gathering process. And we get these insights from you on the phone, via email, social media. They also come in from professional guides, outfitters, military, law enforcement, competitive shooters. All of these inputs combined with the time that we ourselves spend out in the field really help the product team develop a, a point of view regarding new products and ultimately drive innovation. This is where the R&D team, the design team, that's where they get their start. Working with our product line managers, an idea for a new product innovation or a new product need is born.